Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Rob Satram from Feedback Ranch. You know, we help you with your digital marketing. We help with websites and consulting. We help, really, my mission is to help small businesses um, grow to help maximize their efforts. I'm out here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's freaking October 12th and it's snowing. It's garbage, but at least I'm not in Fargo, North Dakota, where they got a ton of snow. But here in this video, here's what I want to talk about. When you're a small business owner, or even if you are in sales at all, okay? I've had a ton of sales experience, okay? And everybody seems to tack up sales as being pushy or trying to get people to buy stuff, but that's not what you're doing, right? You're trying to help help a group of people solve a problem or fulfill a desire, and you're trying to help them do the right thing, okay? You're gonna, you're gonna serve as a guide, a trusted advisor, a trusted guide to help them navigate and hopefully find the solution that your company sells, right? But there's this weird thing that happens. Now, when I do my strengths finder thing, if you've ever done that, one of my top strengths is belief, which means when I believe to my core that something is great, that a solution is awesome, that means that, doggone, I'm gonna be good at helping advance that, whatever that is. If I believe in something, and, and on the backside of that is if I don't believe in it, I kinda hamstring myself. Now, What's cool when you're an entrepreneur is that you can actually go out and you can craft your own solution to these problems. And when you craft your own solutions, doggone it, you better be making something that you can stand behind and feel really great about. That's kind of cool. But a lot of you salespeople out there don't have that situation, right? But here's what I want to talk about. There's this weird thing that happens when, when you require a belief in your bones that something is worth it to be able to sell it, you get stuck in this weird pickle. So first off, nothing helps more than getting some cojones behind you and determining that my solution is absolutely worth it. In fact, I was just making some videos for these accounting firms that I've been helping, talking about that the first step that you need to do in order to have a successful firm is to believe in your doggone bones that if people intersect with you, you're going to help save them in taxes, you're going to help mitigate their problems and save them time, and that you're going to help keep them compliant. If you can know that when they talk to you, the difference between before and after is going to be huge, then you can prospect, your cup will be full, sales will be easy, but if you don't believe that, you're going to have problems. But there's this extra little wrinkle of problem that occurs, okay? And I'm going to keep this short, okay? So just stay with me. Here's the wrinkle of problem. We tend to shop out of our own pocket, and most great clients have a different looking pocketbook than we do, okay? So you have to manage this tension between um, maximizing your convictions and your necessity to believe that something's worth it in order to be a great salesperson with the fact that your pocketbook and the way your life, like here I am out in, I'm out in a suburb of Minneapolis and my net profits and my wealth and my operations look totally different than a lot of the clients that I'm talking to, right? So if that's you, you have to identify that you can't shop out of your own pocketbook. You have to work very hard to put yourself in the world of these people empathize with them, ask tons of humble questions to understand what it's like to be them, to get perspective because doggone it, especially if you're selling higher end goods. You know, my dad is the sales manager at Ziggler, the Caterpillar dealer here, <clears throat> and he's been there for 30 years now, okay? And when you look at what does it take to sell a half million dollar machine? Well, you can't shop out of your own pocketbook, right? Well, you need to manage this tension. Get some conviction behind what you're selling. Get some conviction. Make sure if you're an entrepreneur that you're crafting a solution that absolutely is worth having conviction about. But then also be careful that you're not saying, well, I wouldn't pay that. You know, remodeling and construction is a prime example. Appliances, prime example where you shop out of your own uh, pocket and it's not helpful. Quick story here, I should have led with this. Back when I used to work at Best Buy, we used to sell Geek Squad black tie protection. It was super annoying, right? <laughs> but I cut my teeth selling at Best Buy. And I always used to think, oh, they had this solution where for $130 a year plus $20 a month, you would get remote Geek Squad black tie protection. I always used to think, that's so stupid. You need to pay like $300 a year and you could just buy some antivirus and fix it, right? Until I started to realize what a great solution that is for businesses. If you're a business owner and you have a couple of computers, to have $20 a month where your employees don't ask you anything when the computer doesn't work or office doesn't work or Word won't load this and Excel won't do that, and you can just call the Geek Squad and they dial in and fix it for you, 
that is definitely worth $20 a month, <laughs> okay? I was shopping out of my own pocketbook and I hadn't worked hard to gain perspective of what somebody else's life, operation, or systems might look like. I'm telling you, make sure that you do that. Don't sell out of your own pocketbook, but get some conviction dog on it and you'll get good at sales. Good luck in everything that you do.